Welcome back, everyone, to our final session. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm sure you can imagine it's taken a great effort to put this conference back on track from March when it was originally planned uh, under the current circumstances. However, I'm delighted that it's been a fascinating three-day discussion. And indeed, uh, this has been the most global alliance conference yet, with over 800 participants over the three days, viewers from 70 countries, and over 300 international and civil society organizations participating. I'd like to wholeheartedly thank the ICT team, the interpreters, the whole conference services team, our friends in the communications department, as well as my own team for their hard work and dedication, without which this conference would not have taken place. And in particular, I wanna extend my sincere gratitude to Annalise and Jaron from my team who together uh, put in a tremendous amount of work, long hours uh, and true professionalism to see this conference to its conclusion. You know, as a former prosecutor, I had the opportunity to listen to victims describe the harm they had experienced many times and heard their feelings of helplessness and their pleas for justice. And what I learned, I think, is that impunity directly feeds into the worst fears of victims. Sean Wheeler, who you heard yesterday, told us that through this conference, he truly feels encouraged seeing how many people are engaged in this fight. I am also equally encouraged that we are listening to those who've been harmed. And we will close this conference feeling inspired and with a strong will to do better and give an extra push in the fight against trafficking. We owe a great debt to those victims and survivors who over the course of this conference lent their voices to this effort and to all the others who have spoken up for this effort. I believe the widespread impunity of traffickers in human, for traffickers in human beings is a grave concern for the rule of law in our region, <clears throat> the security of our societies and the safety of all our citizens. As a regional security organization, we have the utmost responsibility to support participating states in tackling this scourge. And it is not only a security issue, however, but obviously a human rights issue as well. Exploitation violates the dignity of those who suffer. It creates trauma that can last a lifetime and frays the fabric of our communities. It is a hidden shame in our society, and it is time to prioritize political and financial resources to seriously address this crime. I hope and I believe that conversations like the ones we've had over the past days can help us move in the right directions. Prosecuting traffickers is not on its own the end of human trafficking but surely it is a step in the right direction towards ending it. We need to replace the culture, culture of impunity with a culture of justice. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we have heard in detail about the monumental challenge in front of us. However, we have also learned that we can change that equation. There are plenty of good policies and practices out there in the OSC region and beyond. If replicated and implemented to their full potential and if backed up, by significant investment and political will, they can bring about a positive impact and effectively help more victims of exploitation and put an end to human trafficking. During the conference, for example, we learned that the establishment of specialized anti-trafficking units and strengthened multi-agency cooperation produced stronger evidence leading to more successful prosecutions. This idea of cooperation also extends to the establishment of joint investigative teams, which allow authorities to tackle complex cross-border cases. In terms of working smarter, we learned that greater cooperation between law enforcement agencies and financial investigators and financial services companies can lead to strong evidence to identify traffickers and victims, support prosecutions, and assist countries in confiscating illicit funds and compensating victims. In addition, investigators need to develop skills to detect suspicious transactions, in particular cryptocurrency movements, as well as criminals increasingly as criminals increasingly prefer these methods of hiding and moving their profits. Likewise, we can promote technology tools, as you heard several times, to conduct market level investigations rather than case-based investigations to dismantle larger chunks of the exploitation infrastructure. We heard about the need to offer regular, specialized and sustainable training programs for relevant law enforcement units across sectors, including financial, cyber, labor, migration and border police. 
as well as the training of judges in order to enable proper identification and support of victims, including protecting their rights, as well as consistent application of law and appropriate sentences based on the seriousness of the crime. And to recall Sister Botani, where there is vulnerability, there are often gray zones where trafficking remain hidden in plain sight. At times, victims do not even see themselves as victims, so investigators need to be trained to find and detect situations of exploitation to properly support them. We also learn there are no shortcuts to the protection and promotion of the rights of victims. These should always be a primary consideration. The use of a victim-centered, gender-sensitive, trauma-informed approach by the criminal justice system is not only highly important in ensuring victims' rights throughout the recovery and reintegration process, but also in implementing effective prosecutorial responses. In this regard, the full application of the principle of non-punishment of victims for their involvement in unlawful activities where they have been compelled to do so plays a key role. Also, strong national referral mechanisms for the identification and protection of victims have the potential to lead to better engagement and cooperation and eventually contribute not only to better outcomes for victims, but to better prosecutions and accountability for traffickers. Let me summarize it like this. Supported victims lead to stronger cases. Moreover, when they are supported, listened to and empowered, victims of trafficking can offer unique guidance not only in policy discussions, but in law enforcement operations on the ground as well. And we heard some great examples of that. We also need to address the lack of mechanisms to hold users and facilitators, as Ms. Vasiliadu pointed out, the entire human trafficking chain, as well as legal entities criminally liable for human trafficking offenses by filling loopholes and extending our reach to all participants in the human trafficking enterprise. Finally, I took note of the broad consensus among speakers on how important it is to have necessary resources and political will for law enforcement, prosecution, and judiciary bodies, be they financial, human, material, or policy resources, in order to carry out their anti-trafficking tasks. This is perhaps the most challenging and yet most important ingredient. Change will not happen by itself. We must want it. This is particularly true in these times of crisis with the COVID-19 pandemic and its heavy impact on the economic system. We need to prioritize resources for anti-trafficking efforts, whether providing victims with access to safe and immediate accommodation, even in time of lockdown, or planning systematic labor inspections of high-risk industries. Without targeted action, this health and economic crisis risks becoming a human trafficking crisis, as vulnerabilities will compound in the months to come. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, most, if not all, of the elements I enumerated earlier already exist on paper in the form of OSCE commitments, which is indicative of the forward-leaning nature of the OSCE's work, but implementation is lacking. As a result, too many traffickers are still running their businesses, recklessly exploiting human lives, while survivors are wrestling with the consequences of their exploitation. This has to change. Those deprived of their freedom and their future deserve justice. It is therefore urgent that we respond. Today, I call on all, all of us to start turning the tide on the negative trend that we have highlighted at the beginning of this conference. When tackling large challenges, we need to be ambitious in our efforts. And with this in mind, I would like to propose a specific target for us all to change this dynamic. I urge all participating states to set a concrete goal of tripling the number of prosecutions within the next three years. Now you might think this goal is naive, but I suggest to you that if prosecutions can fall 50% in three years, that if we put our minds to it, we can certainly raise them far more than that. My office stands ready to support you and your anti-trafficking authorities in designing and implementing effective strategies to prosecute traffickers and deliver justice to more victims. I encourage all participating states to step up and invest more in combating this crime, which affects millions of people in our region. Passing a law against human trafficking is not enough. We must build the capacities of law enforcement prosecutors and judges to be more effective, and we must offer more support and protection to victims who actually come forward. But none of this will work without political will. We must want that change. We must believe in change. We must carry with us the voices of those who endured human trafficking and honor their courage. 
It's an uncomfortable truth that no country has defeated human trafficking, but winning is possible. As a region, we have an opportunity to take the lead rather than surrender. Let's seize this opportunity. We owe it to the millions of victims who deserve justice and to all our citizens. With that, one more time before closing this conference, let us find inspiration in the words of our survivor leaders who are showing us the way forward. Speaking from the lens of a survivor and a professional, one most challenging encounter for survivors of human trafficking is having to bear the burden that is caused by those who profited from their victimization. This is an attribute for so many untold stories of survivors of human trafficking around the world whose stories are not believed because they do not sound like sensational perfect victims. My name is Malaika. I'm a founder of Footprint to Freedom, a survivor-led organization that empowers survivors to take the front line in the fight against human trafficking, but also it promotes survivor leadership. I am a speaker, a mentor, a coach, an advocate for victims' rights, but most of all, I am a survivor of human trafficking. The idea or the narrative of a perfect victim is not only dangerous, but also it blinds us from seeing the victims that are standing before our very eyes. Survivors do not have to be perfect for us to believe them. To date, so many cases remain unattended to because the victims lack credibility in the way they answer the questions. But some of these questions are just a sword that opens the wounds of these survivors to their traumatic experiences. And some of these questions contradict with the value norms of the, the victims and the survivors. But sometimes the victims are not ready to open the wounds of what happened to them. I know this from experience that most girls who are victims of human trafficking have a history of abuse, neglect, and not being hurt. So crying and tears have only showed them that they will get them into more trouble. So they come up with the cover narrative that is numbness as a way to survive. But this numbness of survivors, unfortunately, has made them be misjudged or being looked at as um, not uh, emotional enough to be real victims. In order to achieve more convictions, there is need to build a better relationship between victims and the federal agencies. But also, there is need for the agencies to incorporate uh, victim-centered and trauma-informed practices during their uh, victim identif uh, identifying victims, but also in prosecuting the human trafficking offenses. Better still, um, there's also need for more co uh, collaboration between uh, survivor professionals of human trafficking with the federal agency. Uh, this can help in coming up with more effective strategies in prosecuting and preventing of human trafficking and also in crafting the right policies. Why? Because uh, survivors of human trafficking know firsthand uh, the tactics and the strategies that um, traffickers use to bound people into slavery. For example, they know firsthand uh, what their recruitment tendencies, their mentalities, and the strategies they use to, accept, uh, to escape the law. I believe that engaging survivors and victims with the federal agencies, this effort will increase prosecution of traffickers, protect victims, and prevent future victimization of survivors of human trafficking. Too often the victims bear the burden caused by those who profited from their victimization and too many cases are left unattended because victims are not seen, heard, or believed, as Malika said. This can change if we listen to victims and take action now. And now for final remarks, I'm delighted to welcome Ambassador Igli Hassani, Chairperson of the OSC Permanent Council. Ambassador Hassani, as I said at the beginning of this conference, this effort needs champions. And I applaud Albania's leadership on this topic, elevating trafficking to a priority for the chair in 2020 and backing that up with new and impactful initiatives on the ground. 
Ambassador, thank you for being such a champion and thank you for joining us today. The floor is yours. Thank you so much, uh, dear Val, Excellencies, uh, distinguished uh, guests, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. It falls to me to close on behalf of the Albanian Chairmanship what has been an important and productive three days. But first, allow me this, to use this opportunity to thank the organizers and respective speakers and panelists for their contributions. As my dear friend, our special representative, uh, Val Ricci, stated, to put this conference back on track, especially under this year's uh, extraordinary circumstances, required a great effort, and congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, 2020 marks the 20th anniversary of the Palermo Protocol, the first robust framework of instruments for combating trafficking in human beings. As reflected by the Albanian Minister of Interior, the protocol elevated the fight against human trafficking to an international level and remains the basis for how we all operate and cooperate today. But as this conference has underlined, there is much we still need to do. Already back in 2006, participating states note that, I quote, only a very limited number of victims in comparison with estimates have been identified and assisted and few traffickers have been brought to justice and received appropriate sentences. And I end the quote. Almost 15 years ago, and still on, it is unacceptable that there are over 2,000 victims for each prosecution. To use an image uh, that was evoked in the video we just saw, impunity is an open wound in our society. And I hope that conversations like the one we have had these three days can help us move in the right direction and work to close that wound. Because wherever impunity reigns, the rule of law is undermined and the security and safety of all our citizens, especially the most vulnerable, is threatened. It is time to reverse this trend, strike each of the elements that make up this criminal cycle and deliver justice. This Alliance Conference showcased a number of great policies and practices to do just that. And we look forward to seeing the full report and recommendation. The Albanian OSC Chairmanship will continue to prioritize this issue and will continue to lend our full support to the work of the OSC field missions, executive structures and institutions to make a difference on the ground. We have heard in this forum that specialized law, specialized law enforcement units and effective cooperation between law enforcement produces better evidence which reflect into more successful prosecutions. Such units and bodies need proper financing. Let us also use the full potential of new technology tools such as big data and artificial intelligence, which are essential to collect better and smarter evidence and also to catch perpetrators and users. We must also listen to the voices of victims of human trafficking when thinking about how we design and implement our policy efforts is of utmost importance. Only then can we be sure that we're addressing their needs. Victimless prosecution needs to be encouraged and become the norm. This means bringing to an end the exclusive reliance on witness testimony. We should instead use the special investigative techniques and modern tools we heard of. And we must continue sharing lessons across our region and the world, identifying emerging trends, learning from one another, and strengthening our efforts. Ladies and gentlemen, with this conference, we intended to launch a renewed push to increase the number and improve the quality of prosecutions. A renewed push to implement the existing commitments we have, including in the OEC. The Albanian chairmanship endorses the special representatives strong call to change the current state of affairs, end impunity, and reinvigorate our effort to eradicate human trafficking. This means more people behind bars and a fiercer pursuit of criminal assets, confiscating and recovering the proceeds of this heinous crime. So we not only deliver justice for the victims, but also send a strong message to those who aspire to get involved in trafficking in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you all for your participation. Thank you, Ambassador, for that uh, great speech. And I, I love that phrase, fiercer pursuit, indeed. Uh, I, I wish everyone um, 
a fantastic uh, day and week and month. And I thank you all so much for joining us from across the OSC region. Uh, let us all uh, engage in a fiercer pursuit of human trafficking and an uh, attempt to eradicate it. And I thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to working with you all in the future.